the ayat of Allah. He is an imam in the deen. And those people who praised him, they praised him usually about his fiqh, about his intellect, about his knowledge, about what he did for the science of jurisprudence. But when it comes to hadith and the transmission of hadith and the narration and the safeguarding of the sacred statements of Al-Mustafa Al-Ameen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there's no playing around in this issue. The man is da'if, he's da'if. And those scholars did not say a man was da'if just to play around. They're above that and beyond that. Someone says he's da'if just to get back at him. That would entail he's throwing the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of the window because this man is in the chain of narration. The ulama of the past, especially back then, were above that and far removed from that. So he's da'if in hadith, la shakka fihi, but in the deen he is an imam. Next thing that we want to mention in is, unfortunately, an imam Abu Hanifa, it's not understood that although he's weak in hadith and they attribute and connect him to Ahlul Ra'i, the people of opinions, he was nonetheless from the people of al-hadith. And imam Abu Hanifa is from Ahlul Hadith. And Ahlul Hadith, they're not a clubhouse we're Ahl al-Hadith, meaning we're just different from the old Bundis and Brawis. And Imam Ahmed, when he was asked, who are Ahl al-Hadith? He said, they are the people who work by the Hadith. And Imam Abu Hanifa was one of those people who worked by the Hadith. If it came to him, he was convinced about its authenticity, he followed it. He said to his students, if the Hadith is authentic, then it's my madhhab. If the Hadith is sahih, then it's my madhhab. Whether I know it or I don't know it, it's my madhhab. So he's from the ulama al hadith. He had a dream, he had a dream that he saw himself ex excavating and digging up the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. He had a dream. He sent someone to Al Imam Muhammad ibn Sirin, who was well known for interpreting dreams. There's a book about the interpretation of dreams attributed to Muhammad ibn Sirin. It's not his book, he never wrote that book. But he was known as being a person who could interpret dreams. Imam Abu Hanifa sent someone, go find out for me, what is this interpretation of the dream? I saw myself digging up the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hamid ibn Sareem said the interpretation of the dream is that this person is going to make the, take the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and present it to the people. Take it from him and present it to the people. So Ali Imam Abu Hanifa was from the people of Al-Hadith and that he worked by the Hadith. But in terms of his minhaj, in terms of how he used to extract rules and regulations, he was from the people of Ar-Ra'i. And that's a problem. The people of Ar-Ra'i, of opinions, they're the people who would say things like, what if such and such happens, what would be the ruling? What if in the month of Ramadan, the sun, instead of rising from the east, it rose from the west? How do we start our fast? They would ask those kinds of questions. Intellectual questions that were mixed with philosophy and so forth and so on. And it caused their madhab and their approach and their way to be frowned upon and looked down on by the people of Alul Hadith and rightly so. And rightly so. Because the Muslims are not in need of the philosophy of the Greeks or the Romans or the Persians. And by the way, if you didn't know, Ali Imam Abu Hanifa was from the sons from the sons of Persia. There are some statements that have been made that they have exaggeration in the position of Al Imam Abu Hanifa. Wallahi ikhwani, I don't know, just like you don't know, if Abu Hanifa is in the Jannah or the Nar. I hope he's in the Jannah or he's in the Jannah. And I pray that Allah Ta'ala puts him in the Jannah to the those and puts us there with him so that we can meet him, inshallah. But for someone to say emphatically that he's in the Jannah, he's speaking without knowledge and he goes against one of the principles of the people of the Sunnah. And the people of the Sunnah, they don't put anyone in the Jannah, nor do they put anyone in the hellfire unless there's proof for that. Abu Bakr is where? Umar is where? Abu Huraira is where? The companion who came in the masjid and urinated in the masjid is where? Huh? He's in the Jannah. The Mahdi is where? In the Jannah. Fir'aun is where? In the Nar. Abu Jahl is where? Uh, 
Obama is where? Where is Obama? Allahu Alam. He may embrace this religion and ultimately go to the people of Al Jannah. May Allah guide him to Al Islam and make things easy for the Muslims. Some of the ghulu of the people in Abu Hanifa, amazing. One of the things that they say about Al Imam Abu Hanifa is that anyone who criticizes him, he only criticizes him because he's ignorant or he's jealous, envious, and that's not acceptable. Al Imam Abu Hanifa was criticized by a number of scholars. There is a scholar, and he has knowledge, Hanafi. His name is Zahid al Kothari. Nas'alallah al Afi wa Salam. He's a man who went overboard with Al Imam Abu Hanifa. Some of the people from the Hanafi Madhab, from the Ulama of Hadith, and they have knowledge. If they were in Birmingham, I think I would sit with some of them. They make the tahqiq of books, and anytime someone said in a book previously something negative about Al Imam Abu Hanifa, they'll use six, seven, eight pages defending Abu Hanifa in Batil. So the scholar from Al Yemen, Al Yemen, Al Imam Al Muallami, Abdurrahman Al Muallami, he refuted this man Al Kothari and a lot of what he said in his book at Tanqil, Al Muhim. Some people criticize Al Imam Abu Hanif and the Haq was with them. They were defending the religion. Al Imam Abu Ahmed, Al Bukhari, Muslim. What do you mean they were jealous? Another statement, and that statement is not acceptable. Today, Khwani, if you were to criticize some of the ulama that we hold on to, if you criticize Sheikh Rabi' for an example, there are those people who say you're against all of the ulama. Any and everyone can say a statement or do something that's wrong. No matter who he is, and he could be criticized. As Al Imam Malik said, everyone's opinions are accepted or rejected except the Prophet. They said about Al Imam Abu Hanifa that he is the Imam Al A'zam. We hear that all the time. He is Al Imam with the Al Ta'rif. Al Imam Al A'zam. No, you could call him Imam Al-Nazim, a great scholar, but don't call him Al-Imam Al-A'zam. The greatest Imam is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was taken from Mecca to Bayt Al-Maqdis, and he prayed with all of the A'imma, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam, all of them. He was the Imam. He's the one who led all of those prophets and messages in the Salat. That Imam Al-A'zam is not consistent with our religion. That's ghulu. Besides, Ikhwani, Al-Imam Ibrahim Rahuya or Rahaway Al-Hanzali was bigger than the four Imams. Hamid ibn Jarir Al-Tabari, bigger than the four Imams. They had their own madhabs. Al-Imam Al-Awza'i, bigger than the four Imams. They had their own madhabs. So why wouldn't they be the Imam Al-A'zam? That's a statement that should be avoided from the severe ghulu that the people had in Al-Imam Abu Hanifa is that they said that he used to complete the recitation of the Quran 60 times every Ramadan. He would complete it once in the daytime and once in the nighttime, every year in the month of Ramadan. I don't think that that's impossible for Allah. That's easy for Allah to create a human being who can do that. But if you were to study the life of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, he taught from Fajr time all the way into the night time. When did he get the time and the strength to do that? 60 times every Ramadan? Plus, that's against the Sunnah. That's prohibited in the religion. Can't complete the Quran in that amount of time. The Prophet said, don't do it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said about Imam Abu Hanifa, that he completed the Quran in totality. How many times did he read the Quran? 70,000 times. Now sometimes if you say this in a masjid where the people love Al Imam Abu Hanifa as we do, but they have an extra love, he completed the Quran 70,000 times. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now I'm not negative and I'm not being pessimistic, nor am I being sarcastic towards this, it's possible. But who counted 70,000 times? Who counted? And Al Imam Abu Hanifa was a man who didn't want to be a judge so that he wasn't in front of the people. He wasn't responsible. I'm sure he's the type of person.